In 2019, during his press tour for The Irishman, Martin Scorsese expressed some concern over the state of modern cinema. He made an analogy that likened the current landscape of superhero franchise films to theme park rides, that they basically reside in a different category than what he considers cinema. And judging by the initial reaction on Twitter, you would have thought that Scorsese had walked up to some random child in the street, slapped the Captain America doll out of his hands, and said, grow up, stupid. I'm your dad now. Some of these hurt feelings belonged to none other than James Gunn. The writer and director of the Guardians of the Galaxy films, and most recently the slightly better Suicide Squad film, got very upset and tweeted. Martin Scorsese is one of my five favorite living filmmakers. I was outraged when people picketed The Last Temptation of Christ without having seen the film. I'm saddened that he's now judging my films in the same way. Oh my god. So, okay. W without going off on too much of a tangent, for those of you who aren't familiar with the controversy surrounding The Last Temptation of Christ, let me quickly fill you in. The Last Temptation of Christ, written by Paul Schrader and directed by Martin Scorsese, explores the human struggles of Jesus Christ Defoe. Much like the novel it's adapted from, it portrays good old JC grappling with many human emotions and temptations, like anger, fear, and the one that really got the conservatives worked up, lust. Protests broke out all over the place until finally a group of Catholic extremists set the Saint Michel cinema in Paris on fire. Thirteen people were injured, four of which were severely burned, and for several years afterward, Martin Scorsese was like, yeah, I better walk around with bodyguards for a while. So essentially, James Gunn likened Scorsese saying that Marvel wasn't really cinema to him to a Christian extremist movement that resulted in a terrorist attack. So I think it's safe to say that James reacted emotionally. And to his credit, I think he realized this because he tweeted again to walk it back a little bit. And I'm not saying religious zealotry is the same as not liking my movies or in the same category. What I'm saying is I'm not fond of people judging things without actually seeing them, whether it's a movie about Jesus or a genre. You think it's a blessing to know what God wants? I'll tell you what he wants. But I'm not making this video to make fun of people who may have overreacted to what Scorsese said. I simply bring up Gunn's reaction because I feel as though it pretty well encapsulates the initial backlash as a whole. It lovingly wraps its powerful branches around the fandom and comforts them with a resounding, we are cringe. Nor do I want to break down every little bit of the New York Times essay Scorsese wrote in response to the backlash in order to contextualize and clarify those statements. The essay is there for those who want to take the time to read it, and it more than speaks for itself. Scorsese's statements about modern superhero films have been talked about and criticized and analyzed nonstop for the past few years, and I have little to add to that particular portion of this discussion. God knows film Twitter goes off about this topic about as frequently and reliably as a full moon. What I do want to talk about is how the media has handled this, and why Scorsese's comments took hold and have remained in the public discourse for as long as they have. From the moment Scorsese's statements became public and many people like James Gunn reacted defensively on social media, the mainstream media seemed to collectively make the decision to treat this as if it were some sort of legitimate scandal. And in every interview, forever after, it seemed as though no filmmaker was safe from the Marvel question. Martin Scorsese recently, I don't yeah. know if you saw this, was yeah. talking about... He thinks that Marvel films are not cinema. Did you hear Martin Scorsese's thoughts on Marvel films? How do you feel about how things ultimately played out with what Martin Scorsese had to say about the movies? Marty said that a lot of the films you he made today are theme park rides. Marty, what are you doing? <laughs> what? You fuck my wife. Scorsese's initial comments were made in an interview for Empire Magazine. This piece was a retrospective on Scorsese's life and work from his younger years sitting on the fire escape outside of his family's apartment dreaming about becoming a filmmaker, onward through his body of work leading up to the film he was promoting at the time, The Irishman. A lifetime of trials, tribulations, and inspirations that led to an extensive catalog of critically acclaimed films were discussed. Eventually Marvel was brought up, and this was Scorsese's response. I don't see them. I tried, you know, but that's not cinema. 
Honestly, the closest thing I can think of them, as well made as they are, with actors doing the best they can under the circumstances, is theme parks. It isn't the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional, psychological experiences to another human being. The media latched onto this small portion of the interview, like Thanos plucking that mind stone out of Vision's forehead, reducing the rest of the article to a lifeless husk, dropped onto the forest floor as if it never existed. The press then snapped its fingers, and just like that, half of all life in the universe was talking about how Martin Scorsese said Marvel was not cinema. The initial backlash was pretty standard Twitter outrage. He gets framed as this out-of-touch old man, people are accusing him of being jealous, we get the James Gunn tweets. Joss Whedon chimes in with his disagreements, ending his tweet with the half-joking Avengers reference, well, there's a reason I'm always angry. Turns out that wasn't a joke. And C. Robert Cargill stated that anyone who thinks Marvel is only trying to make theme park rides is being unjust and cynical. And look, I get it. If I saw his initial statements and I'm one of these filmmakers that's busted my ass making one of these things after a lifetime of loving Scorsese's work, I'm sure it would sting. We're all guilty of it. We hear something that offends us personally, and we post before thinking that it might just make us look a little bit wilder and wackier than we actually are. Again, relatively normal Twitter stuff, if you can call anything that goes on on Twitter normal. People agreed with him, people disagreed with him, moving on, right? Just kidding, we still have it. The initial wave of this backlash happened in the first week of October 2019, following the release of Empire Magazine's October issue. But here's something interesting. One month later, on November 4th, Scorsese's opinion piece was released by the New York Times. In this essay, he gives a detailed and thoughtful explanation of what his definition of cinema is, how the MCU falls outside of that definition, and his mounting concerns over filmmakers having to compete with these massive companies for space in theaters. His essay begins with, When I was in England in early October, I gave an interview to Empire Magazine. I was asked a question about Marvel movies. I answered it. The statement about Empire Magazine is highlighted, presumably providing a link to the source, but when you click on that link, it doesn't take you to Empire Magazine's website. It takes you to an IndieWire article by Zach Scharf entitled, Martin Scorsese Compares Marvel Movies to Theme Parks, That's Not Cinema, an article about the Empire article. Now, this is partially because at the time the opinion piece was posted, there was no Empire link to provide because they didn't post the Scorsese interview on their website until a few days later on November 7th. But the link was never altered to direct people towards Empire. It remains linked to the IndieWire article. I find this interesting because at the end of the day, the backlash to me has less to do with the Empire interview and almost everything to do with the way every other publication chose to frame a small part of what he said in it. All of these articles that came out about his Marvel comments between the 3rd and 4th of October all have one thing in common. They make sure to put the that's not cinema quote in the title. Completely void of context, no indication as to whether it was prompted or unprompted. You know, good old fashioned clickbait. A very clear attempt to frame Scorsese in this very specific way, as a snobbish, out of touch old man with a very narrow view of what cinema is. Which of course couldn't be further from the truth, but whether you're annoyed with us or Scorsese, you clicked on it. Thank you for engaging with our article about the article about the article. Drive safe and stay angry. Anyway, please just read the actual Empire article. It's pretty good. It's well written. Many topics were discussed other than whether or not he enjoyed superhero movies. Not the least of which being the fact that when he was growing up in Queens and Manhattan, he saw how a lot of young men his age were ending up dead from getting on the mafia's bad side. Or how he and his friends would play in the streets and have to jump over dying alcoholics. Pretty intense, traumatic stuff for a little kid to have to witness. And way more interesting than anything Marvel related, like why on earth was that the part of the article we latched onto, Jesus Willem Dafoe Christ? During a press conference at the London BFI Film Festival about a week after this whole thing blew up and a few weeks before releasing his essay, Scorsese was asked a question about redefining cinema and you can tell he knew his ass was in trouble already that week by the way he jokingly begins his answer. So what would you think, um, will, will we need to at some point redefine perhaps what is cinema? Hmm. Well, now you're looking at me. Um. He goes on to describe the evolution of cinema as not just an evolution, but a revolution, and we basically get a preview of what would be fleshed out even further in the New York Times essay. Um, the value 
How do you, I don't know, say the value of a film that's like a uh, theme park film, for example, uh, the Marvel type pictures, where, where the theaters become amusement parks. That's a different experience. And it's like, it's not even, it's a, I was saying earlier, it's not cinema, it's something else. You know, whether you go for that or not, but it is something else and they shouldn't be, we shouldn't be invaded by it. Um, and so that, that's a big issue. That's a big issue. Uh, and we need the theater owners to step up for that, you see. A few weeks later, in his opinion piece for the New York Times, he expands upon this point by stating that that's the nature of modern film franchises. Market researched, audience tested, vetted, modified, re-vetted, and remodified until they are ready for consumption. It gives a pretty clear picture of what he means by that's not cinema. And whether you agree with him or not, I feel like most people upon reading this essay in full would at the very least understand his criticisms and concerns. In a somewhat rational world, one would think that the publishing of this essay, the thoroughness of it, the fact that he made sure to point out Many franchise films are made by people of considerable talent and artistry. You can see it on the screen. The fact that the films themselves don't interest me is a matter of personal taste and temperament. Would mark the end or at least the final act of this controversy, but it never really went away, even though it's been years. 63 Zebra, answer me now or I'm sending a captain to your location. Frank, when I say don't answer it, that means answer it. You can do me that favor at least. From the time the media was able to drum up the controversy they wanted on Twitter by making his initial statements about Marvel a headline, interviewers began asking every actor and filmmaker they could what they thought of Martin Scorsese saying that superhero films and or MCU films are not cinema. What's interesting is that the vast majority of actors that were asked this question in interviews were super respectful with their answers. Nobody seemed to be angry and everyone just kind of respectfully disagreed regarding the that's not cinema statement. Unfortunately, clickbait being what it is, even if a celebrity doesn't come off as super spicy with their answer to a question, it can be framed in an article as if they did. Watch how Samuel L. Jackson handles being asked about this barely 24 hours after this whole thing popped off. Uh, did you hear Martin Scorsese's thoughts on Marvel films, on superhero films not being I cinema? I that, but I didn't pay much attention to it. You were kind of like, it, it doesn't... I mean, that's like saying, you know, Bug Bunny ain't funny. You know, films are films. You know, everybody doesn't like his stuff either, you know. I mean, we happen to, but yeah. ev everybody doesn't. You know, there are a lot of Italian Americans that don't think he should be making films about them like that. So, I mean, everybody's got an opinion. So, I mean, it's okay. I ain't gonna stop nobody from making movies. Now, you all just observed what he said and how he said it, right? Well, look at how this Hype Beast article titled Samuel L. Jackson responds to Martin Scorsese's comments on Marvel films describes what you just heard. Since Martin Scorsese's comments on Marvel films, actor Samuel L. Jackson has broken silence and responded with his own comments. He didn't answer a question, you guys. He broke his silence. It had been like a day. How is that breaking your silence? I think this reporter was just the first person to ask him about it is all. I guess I'm not just ordering food when I'm at a restaurant. I am breaking my silence about the enchiladas and the fact that I would like some. It may seem like a small thing, but a little turn of phrase like this can add gravitas to something that's otherwise not a big deal. Plus, when you read an interview, the people involved are very much at the mercy of the descriptive language surrounding what they said. Like the title of this Vox article about Martin Scorsese's opinion piece. Martin Scorsese's fight against Marvel isn't really about Marvel movies. The iconic director isn't mad at Black Panther, he's mad at Marvel's system. Though on the surface it may seem as though they're trying to contextualize and defend what he said, the language they use is kinda wild. Fight? Who's fighting? Who's mad? Scorsese has never expressed anything resembling anger regarding this subject, and he certainly never mentioned Black Panther specifically. Now you're just putting words in his mouth. The media loves a feud, though. And the anger expressed towards Scorsese's initial comments on Twitter left them desperate for more, so we gotta ask everybody and their mother what they thought about what he said, and hopefully we can get some click-worthy responses. But like I said, in the early days of this question being thrown around, for the most part, everyone responded in a very even-handed way, expressing their love for Scorsese and his work while respectfully disagreeing with the That's Not Cinema comment. Even Robert Downey Jr., who was struck by Scorsese's comments enough to actually be the one to broach the subject during his Howard Stern interview. And um, according to Scorsese, it's not cinema. I gotta take a look at that, you know? Was quick to challenge Howard when he tried to suggest that Scorsese was in some way motivated by jealousy. 
it, it makes no sense. But what to was say he trying? Was he jealous of the success? Of course not. But I mean, he's Martin Scorsese. He then what makes... does he mean by it? Crispin Glover used the opportunity of being asked what he thought of Scorsese's comments to talk about corporate propaganda in the way of American idealism, which was pretty sick, honestly. For lack of a better word, the uh, comic book derived films that are not necessarily character studies and are more dealing with comforting the American public to feel as though they're a righteous, um, uh, justified uh, police force in the world. That's that's essentially what the, the message, uh, you know, I mean, it's generalized, but essentially that's an underlying message of what's going on in our corporate um, propaganda. That's online one-point uh, propaganda. And, and it happens a lot in, in our, in our uh, film industry. Shout out to Crispin Glover for pulling a fast one. Tim Blake Nelson actually took the time to read the op-ed and described it as gorgeously written. And then Paul Rudd handled this about as perfectly as anyone could in his position. Martin Scorsese said this week, that he thinks that Marvel films are not cinema. As an MCU stalwart yourself, what do you think of those comments? I mean, I, somebody asked, asked me this earlier, um, and I don't really have an, you know, I don't have a, a response. I love Martin Scorsese, I love his movies. I, I can't wait to see The Irishman. Um, He's so. right here. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the backlash, the wave of interviews being dominated by this question and headline after headline of so-and-so responds to Martin Scorsese's comments on superhero films. And then we get to January of 2020. The Hollywood Reporter uploads its director's roundtable, which includes Martin Scorsese and his comments are brought up again. It's a great roundtable, highly recommend watching it in full. Listen to what Fernando Morellas and Todd Phillips both mentioned in response to the subject being brought up. Do you think superhero films are essentially theme park rides? I mean, maybe, sure, but I like I theme park rides. Yeah, I could explain a little about what that sure. is. Sure. You just, yeah. When you state it like yeah, it that, it's a like, thing. Was it becomes a big thing. Yeah, in India about that. Yeah, in India. In India, I know. <laughs> because you're, yeah, they quote you in the audience oh, yeah, and they yeah. ask me, what do I think about Marvel? It's the new thing, <laughs> we all get asked about it now. It wasn't just actors and directors who had been involved with making MCU or DCU films that were being asked about this controversy. If someone had made a film with any amount of Oscar buzz that year, the questioning now extended to them. Todd Phillips having made Joker something that is both a comic book film and highly derivative of Scorsese's work makes sense as someone who you would direct this question towards. Fernando Morales made a film about two popes called The Two Popes. Why are we involving him? Is it because there's a lot of capes in that movie? All he did was make a good movie, why bother him with this? His answer was pretty funny though. When the Hollywood Reporter asked what his views were on this ongoing Marvel debate, he responded, I know that they are big, but I don't watch them. I mean, I like the technique. Sometimes I watch fragments and trailers and all the VFX and production is really spectacular. Really first class people are involved, but I can't engage with the story. I get sleepy. Sometimes I watch those at the cinema and after half an hour, I am sleepy. It's very overwhelming. It doesn't interest me at all. In asking directors that have no association to the MCU what they thought of the MCU, the media was rewarded, in a way, with more blunt and opinionated answers than those of actors who may find it in their best interest to be more diplomatic about the whole thing. Nice Magnanimous, it's yeah. called. A director who has no aspirations to direct a large franchise film and just kind of does their own thing is a lot more likely to just give their unfiltered opinion when asked about something like this. Like when Francis Ford Coppola, the godpapa himself, came to his old buddy's defense early on and did not hold back. When Martin Scorsese says that Marvel pictures are not cinema, he's right, because we expect to learn something from cinema. We expect to gain something, some enlightenment, some knowledge, some inspiration. I don't know that anyone gets anything out of seeing the same movie over and over again. Martin was kind when he said it's not cinema. He didn't say it's despicable, which I just say it is. Coppola's comments bring up an interesting point, when he says Scorsese was being kind, and not just in relation to him not being quite as harsh with his words as my guy Francis. He really doesn't seem as harsh with his words as most people. Directors have had strong opinions about what they like and dislike about other people's films since forever, so it begs another question. You, <laughs> Scorsese, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 
Scorsese is hardly the first director to be vocal about the types of films he likes and dislikes. You used to have to be a bit of a nerd to even know what certain directors' personal tastes were. I feel like the average person doesn't dive particularly deep into researching who made a film they like a lot. I obviously do, and people who watch channels like mine obviously do, but when you've experienced seeing your friend's eyes glaze over as you talk about directors you like and why, you realize most people don't give a fuck, and that's fine. So when the average person is scrolling Twitter and they come across the headline, Martin Scorsese said Marvel is not cinema, they probably go, uh, what, how could he say that? I love Spider-Man. That it. That was definitely a cinema. So please, do not tell me to relax. But if you've spent any amount of time listening to what directors have to say about film in general, you know that what Scorsese said was downright tame in comparison to, I don't know, everything else that's ever been said. Lost the I don't give up. a flying f into a rolling donut about what Al Pacino thinks. Is that an answer to your question, Greg? Yeah. Like when Michael Haneke totally went after Steven Spielberg for that one scene in Schindler's List. Aus dem Grund, weil man, weil man bestimmte Dinge, äh, ich, ich finde diese, ich finde auch, äh, setze ich mich vielleicht hier in die Nesseln, ich finde einen Film äh, wie äh, ein Spielberg-Film über das Konzentrationslager auch falsch. Ich kann nicht einen Spannungsmoment daraus machen, ob aus der Dusche Gas oder, oder Wasser kommt. Ja. Das ist uh, meiner Meinung nach eine, eine, eine falsche Herangehenswelt. And then there's Tarantino roasting Prometheus on the Late Late Show. There was part of it I actually did like, and I, uh, overall the experience was really cool having been in it. There was also a lot of dumb stuff in it though. Jodorowsky publicly roasting Tarantino. Tarantino. It's Tarantino, not Tarantino. Because they are so businessmen. It's too much business, too much camera, camera. Bullet. <laughs> no, stop. Stop. John Carpenter just fully called Rob Zombie a piece of shit and a liar. I mean, what you asked me about uh, Rob Zombies. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> well, I would say nice things about him, but you know, we did this. Uh, I thought it was, was going to be a real cool deal for the, the History Channel, the Biography Channel, whatever that is. They were going to do about Halloween. I thought, ooh, that's pretty cool. Until I noticed that they did one on Caddyshack. And I thought, wow, what is this? Anyway, they interviewed him on that, on that biography and channel, and he lied about me. He said I was very cold to him when he told me I was going to, and that he was going to make it. Nothing could be further from the truth. I said, make it your own movie, man. You know, this is yours now. Don't worry about me. I was incredibly supportive of why that piece of shit lied, I don't know. <laughs> he had no reason to. And how could we ever forget this absolute bodying of Nicholas Winding Refn by William Friedkin? Oh, I'm like you. I have no regrets about Only God Forgives. I think it's a masterpiece, and it is. I just didn't make it very expensive. Is there a doctor in the house? We, we need to get a medic in here. Is there, is there a doctor around? <laughs> I just didn't make you, it. If you I, think I that's a masterpiece, what is Citizen Kane? It's great. And don't even get some of these directors started on superhero films because for years before Scorsese said a word about them, a bunch of other directors have been openly criticizing Marvel for a while. Gaspar Noé stated that he mostly watches documentaries so he can learn something because most other films bore him before going after Black Panther directly. I tried Black Panther. I escaped from the scene after 20 minutes. I thought it was as bad as Star Wars. I hated Star Wars. When Alejandro González Señorito was asked by Deadline if he wanted to take a crack at making a Marvel film, he said, I would be terrible. I think there's nothing wrong with being fixated on superheroes when you're seven years old, but I think there's a disease in not growing up. Oh my God. David Cronenberg basically said that superhero movies are for kids, adolescent at their core, and that anyone who says The Dark Knight Rises is supreme cinema art doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. Artists are opinionated and have been saying wild shit since forever. One's personal taste is part of what makes someone who they are, makes their art what it is. And for a long time, it seemed as though everyone understood that. 
Even when a director would have a take that was on the ruder side, it was never much of a news story. Annoying at worst, hilarious at best. What a heavy load Einstein must have had. F***ing <laughs> morons everywhere. <laughs> Whether an actor or director likes a certain type of film is interesting to dorks like me, I guess, but I don't know if it ever needs to be a headline, let alone a controversy relax. At the end of the day, it shouldn't be much more than just like a fun fact about them. Something for me to bore people with after a couple of drinks. One opinion goes one way, one opinion goes the other way. Why one not? is going east and the other one is going west, so what? And this guy's saying, what do you want from me? But then things change. Social media comes around, film discourse and entertainment journalism becomes more clickbaity than ever, and by the time Scorsese's take on Marvel is picked up by the press, it's kind of the perfect storm. There are a couple of major factors that I think led to Scorsese finding himself at the center of this whole Marvel debate. 2019 was the year Avengers Endgame was set to come out. Not only was this the end of Phase 3 Marvel, but the end of the first big MCU era. All of these converging storylines from all these different franchises within this universe that began with Iron Man all the way back in 2008 was about to have its grand finale. Avengers Infinity War, basically part one of this grand finale, was Marvel's highest grossing film ever and it ended on a cliffhanger. So people were beyond hyped. Infinity War is praised and spoken about nonstop on the internet for an entire year, and boom. Endgame beats Infinity War's record, and Kevin Feige can just continue to throw stacks of cash into his fireplace whenever he feels like being a little rascal. Meanwhile, Scorsese's promoting his latest film, The Irishman. The Irishman was not only a return to the mafia subgenre Scorsese is known best for, but also a reunion of sorts. It had been years since he had worked with Robert De Niro, Harvey Keitel, or Joe Pesci, and to almost everyone's surprise was finally working with Al Pacino for the very first time. He had been trying to make the film for years, but couldn't get it off the ground until they struck a deal with Netflix. So, highly anticipated film from a film icon with an all-star cast and it's going to be streaming on Netflix. Endgame is released in April. The Irishman is set to come out in November. October comes around, it's the home stretch of Irishman promotion, the MCU fandom is on an emotional high from Endgame, Empire Magazine's October issue drops, and just like that, you could not use the internet without seeing a headline about how Scorsese said Marvel was quote, not cinema. Oh. I'm okay. Smack dab in the middle of the discourse about how much Marvel has achieved, how miraculous it was that something of this magnitude had been pulled off, Scorsese dared to say he didn't care for it. The last decade or so has seen nerd culture morph into the culture, due in no small part to Disney buying both Marvel Entertainment in 2009 and Lucasfilm in 2012. The films were breaking records, merchandising was through the roof, BB-8 was selling oranges, Yoda was selling grapes, and the whole thing was bananas. I grew up in a time when being a nerd was definitely still a niche thing. Listen, I had a hard enough time in elementary school, so I knew better than to go traipsing around my high school announcing to everyone how much I loved anime. It's a good thing I caught you. I'll make an example out of you. Then suddenly, it was like everything that had been considered nerdy or geeky when I was a kid was just fully mainstream. So basically, by the time I'm old enough to actually be able to afford to go to San Diego Comic-Con, the tickets are selling out so fast that I can't even get in. It's fine, I went to Anime Expo instead. With nerd culture going from a subculture to being about as mainstream as football came with a bit of a sports fan mentality, which is funny because Disney also owns ESPN. Of course, there's always been a certain level of zealotry and possessiveness within any given fandom, but all of a sudden it was like everybody was participating. Being a nerd wasn't exactly nerdy anymore. In fact, you weren't exactly keeping up with the Joneses if you weren't up to speed on what all the Avengers were fighting with each other about. I don't remember, but I think it might have been as to whether Captain America's PSAs were cinema or not. And now the merch for all this stuff is beyond accessible. So indulging in these interests beyond watching the films is now just on easy mode. And whether the thing you like is owned by Warner Brothers or Disney, you can just get all the merch at Target now. I can get a multivitamin and a tiny little iron throne all in one trip because winter's coming and I don't feel good. So whether we're talking about theater space or shelf space, this stuff is just everywhere. And people are more openly attached to it than ever. Now that Disney owns everything, there's a seemingly endless supply of these films and more recently shows, because right on the heels of the Scorsese backlash first happening in October, Disney Plus drops the following month. 
2019 was clearly supposed to be Disney's multi-billion dollar victory lap, and financially it was. Releasing The Rise of Skywalker in December was just for walking around money at that point. The folks over at Disney are experts at getting you attached to their brand, and even better at making you think it was all your idea. And I'm not suggesting that if you're into this stuff you've just been fully Jedi mind tricked. I'm just saying you don't exactly have to go to Disney World to be in Disney World anymore. We're living in it. So anyway, even though filmmakers have been openly and brutally trashing each other since forever, Scorsese's comments, as mild as they are in comparison to his contemporaries, are made into a headline at the precise moment everyone was the most comfortable in their cocoon of content. Had barely finished rolling a tear at Tony Stark's sacrifice and feeling the emotional weight of Captain America getting to go back in time and be what he always wanted to be, Captain Grandpa. The music swells, we cut to black, and Scorsese calls it mid. And it's stuck in a way that no other director's criticisms of anything ever have. Remember the year before this when Steven Spielberg said that films that are released on streaming platforms shouldn't even be able to qualify for an Academy Award because they're technically TV movies? Once you commit to a television format, you're a TV movie. You, you, you certainly, if, if it's a good show, deserve an Emmy but not an Oscar. So they shouldn't be nominated for an Oscar. I don't believe that films that are just get give, are given token qualifications in a couple of theaters for less than a week should, be, should qualify for, for the Academy Award nomination. Yeah, forgot about that shit, huh? Because even though this is a way wilder thing to say, it didn't have that same magic. It was too broad. While simultaneously too specific to lovers of film for the general public to care for any extended period of time. People got pissed at him for about five seconds and it went away. The old Spielberg one -er. When you get in trouble for one unbroken, slightly invisible week. Scorsese, like Spielberg, whose name and work everyone knows, whose films inspired many to become filmmakers themselves, just so happened to be asked what he thought of Marvel right as Disney was about to dislocate a shoulder from patting themselves on the back. The stars were aligned for outrage, both genuine and manufactured. You would have thought he had suggested closing the beaches on the 4th of July. I don't think you appreciate the gut reaction people have to these things. Even after Scorsese went to the trouble of writing an essay to flesh out his statements and express genuine concern for the future of cinema, it just wasn't enough, and the Marvel question persists in interviews years later. But there was a bit of a lull in the middle of all this when the pandemic hit. Life came to a screeching halt, we were all trapped inside, theaters closed, film sets were shut down, finished films were delayed, and Tom Cruise was on the phone with every we didn't even know if there was going to be movies anymore. We didn't know if there was going to be anything anymore. 2020 was just tragedy after tragedy, and there wasn't really much room to be asking everyone what they thought of what Scorsese said about Marvel when we were mostly wanting to protect Scorsese, David Lynch, and Mel Brooks from COVID at all costs. I don't remember much, nor can I find much news pertaining to the Marvel question during that particular Oscars cycle. Plus, Best Director and Best Picture winner Chloe Zhao was set to direct Marvel's The Eternals, so no need to ask her what she thinks of superhero films. Another year goes by, theaters have opened again, movies are being released more frequently, and we see the Marvel question start popping up here and there again. It's 2021, we're in a new Oscar cycle, and Marvel drops Black Widow, The Eternals, Shang-Chi, and the film everyone was quick to praise for saving theaters, Spider-Man No Way Home. A lot of films to drop in the span of only six months, so Marvel discourse revs up again. We've also got Dune finally coming out, so when Denis Villeneuve does an interview with El Mundo, the interviewer can't resist bringing up Scorsese's statements from two years ago. Villeneuve responds with, Perhaps the problem is that we are in front of too many Marvel movies that are nothing more than a cut and paste of others. Perhaps these types of movies have turned us into zombies a bit. But big and expensive movies of great value, there are many today. I don't feel capable of being pessimistic at all. As expected, people got annoyed with the cut and paste statement, regardless of Villeneuve's more optimistic view of the future of big budget cinema. In the following months, we see the Marvel question pop up more frequently again in interviews. I don't know if it's entirely because Villeneuve got some backlash for what he said, but it certainly was an indication that this topic still had some clickbait legs even after a couple of years. So we end up seeing some other filmmakers with upcoming major releases that year getting asked what they think of Marvel and or the current landscape of the filmmaking business as a whole. Paul Thomas Anderson had a pretty positive outlook on the whole thing and credited Spider-Man No Way Home for getting people back into theaters. 
Obviously, it's gotten even more complicated with streaming and the sort of overabundance of superhero movies. Most of the stuff I don't take too seriously. I mean, it seems that there is a bit of a preoccupation with superhero films. I like them. It seems to be something that's popular these days to sort of wonder if they've ruined movies and all this kind of stuff. I just don't feel that way. I mean, look, we're nervous about people getting back into the theater, but you know what's gonna get them back into movie theaters? Spider-Man. So let's be happy about that. When asked whether she would be interested in directing a superhero film, the Power of the Dog director Jane Campion told Variety, I hate them. And then Ridley Scott just came in hot on his Deadline interview and just called them fucking boring as shit. The question as to whether you like Marvel, would you direct a Marvel film, or what do you think of people who say Marvel isn't cinema, has obviously been rampant in film interviews for a while, but I think this is the exact moment that I decided it had genuinely gone way too far. Do I like Marvel? What, what like, as in like, all the superhero movies? I mean... What are we doing? So Adele goes live on Instagram in October of 2021 to promote her new album that was to be released the following month. And again, this is 2021, so I wasn't even watching this for research for this video. I'm just an Adele fan and was excited she was doing an Instagram live. And the chat is just about what you would expect, people saying hi from whatever country they're watching from, asking her when she's gonna tour, when is the album coming out? You know, Adele-related questions. So this particular question coming up in this stream just felt very weird and out of nowhere, and I mean, her reaction says it all. Do I like Marvel? What, what like, as in like, all the superhero movies? I mean, it's not really my vibe, but you know, I've got, I've got a young son, so. I guess so. I obviously don't know whether this is a random person asking or some journalist wanting a clickbait-worthy answer, but regardless, it kind of just shows how much of a thing this has become. It's now just a question that you ask whoever, whenever. Doesn't matter. How was traffic? Is it hot out? Do you like Marvel? Paper, plastic, or Marvel? Oh, we don't have 7-Up. Is Marvel okay? I think this is the point where I decided I wanted to talk about this in a video eventually, because when I heard her read off this question, I literally thought I was going insane. Like, leave Adele alone. <laughs> leave her alone! You're lucky she even performed for you bastards! I mean, Jesus, I'm afraid if I find a new therapist, it's gonna be on that little questionnaire they give you in the beginning. Are you feeling depressed right now? Are you on any medications? Do you like Marvel? And then I don't get well. Anyway, what's even my point? Good question. And I guess I better start by answering the question, or rather set of questions that this video is all about. Do I like Marvel? Do I like superhero films? Do I think they're cinema? I mean, sometimes, I guess so. I love the Christopher Nolan Batman stuff, especially The Dark Knight. The Tim Burton ones too. I love the first two Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Norman. And as far as the MCU goes, which is for the most part what this question tends to be about, I think some of them are really good and some of them are f***ing boring as shit. And that's okay. I should be allowed to feel that way especially about a product made by a gigantic corporation. There's no way someone can punch down at Disney. They own everything. And as far as whether this business model, this universe as a whole is cinema, I mean, that's a tough one. Because like Scorsese said in his New York Times essay, these things are market researched, audience tested, vetted, modified, re-vetted, and remodified until they're ready for consumption. Is something that goes through that process cinema? Is it art? I think it's certainly up for debate. It's something I have very mixed feelings about because honestly, it's quite a bit to unpack. I just feel like we should be able to express these things without it devolving into such madness. It doesn't have to be personal. Again, Disney's gonna be fine. Everybody's gonna be fine. But the initial reaction to Scorsese saying that Marvel films aren't cinema to him made it seem as though he went on to say, and anyone who likes them is an idiot and should die. There are just a lot of people who genuinely cannot handle someone, especially someone they admire, not liking everything that they like. And I, ugh, you just gotta let that shit go. I don't know what to tell you. Very few people in my actual life care about the movies I like. And honestly, it's fine. Because I think that if my family actually watched Climax, I would not be invited to Christmas anymore. Fortunately, some of you degenerate sickos out there seem to like my recommendations. And that is good enough for me. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Marvel. We've got to stop asking people this stupid question in interviews. 
Whether it's the Do You Like Superhero Films version of it or its slightly more inflammatory cousin, what do you think of these people who say that it's not cinema? First of all, you've asked everyone. I genuinely don't know if there's anyone left. Second of all, there's this weird intent behind asking it at this point that everybody can feel. It never feels as though it's out of genuine curiosity. It always has this headline-hungry, please give us something to use energy behind it. Please break your silence. Basically, in the same way that Marvel films dominate theater space, they are now dominating our conversations about film. And I think that that sucks. Spider-Girl. What a great idea. During the press tour for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Elizabeth Olsen was asked what she thought of the general criticism towards Marvel and her response was, I'm not saying we're making indie art films, but I just think it takes away from our crew, which bugs me. These are some of the most amazing set designers, costume designers, camera operators. I feel diminishing them with that kind of criticism takes away from all the people who do award-winning films that also work on these projects. From an actor's point of view, whatever, I get it. I totally understand there's a different kind of performance that's happening, but I do think throwing Marvel under the bus takes away from hundreds of very talented crew people. That's where I get a little feisty about that. I found her answer interesting because it highlights another intention I see looming behind this question, which is, let's see how nice of a person you are by how you answer this question. That it may be somewhat problematic of you to have an issue with these films because you are dismissing the hard work of so many. Your comments are throwing so many talented and hardworking people under the bus, how could you do this. It's like a test. It's no longer a discussion about personal taste and or the concerns you might have about the industry at large, but rather, are you a big pretentious meanie or not? And I don't mean this as a criticism towards how Elizabeth Olsen answered this tiresome question. I feel bad for anyone who gets cornered by this dumb subject during an interview. I mean, seriously, how else is she meant to answer? But this moralizing of whether or not you enjoy Marvel has gotta go, dude. This pressure to not be overly critical of one of the most powerful companies on Earth is just borderline creepy. Anyway, I'm really hoping we're in the final death throes of this question being asked. It's just cringeworthy at this point. And I think in hindsight, many people realize that of all the people to get mad at over an opinion about what constitutes cinema, Martin Scorsese is one of the least deserving of all that vitriol. Nobody loves film more than this guy. He started the Film Foundation, a nonprofit film preservation and restoration organization that has restored almost a thousand films. That's almost as many films as Marvel put out last year. If you're watching any documentary that pertains to any aspect of film history, you can bet your ass he's gonna show up in it. I swear to God, he and Guillermo del Toro are in all of these things. It's so cute. And it's not like the guy can't take criticism. Did you know that the reason we got Mean Streets is because John Cassavetes told them that Boxcar Bertha was trash to his face? He uh, took me to his office and uh, it was at Universal. And he was always very funny, John. He was like, <laughs> he's laughing. He looked at me, he's like, hey, uh, come here. Yeah. And he grabbed me and he embraced me. And then he pulled me aside and he said, you just, you just spent a year of your life making a piece of junk. He said, it's a nice picture. It's a nice film. The girl is good, the guys are good, you know. But you could do better than that, he said. You can't get stuck. I know you like B movies. I, lo I know you like the old movies coming out of Hollywood, but you do different things. He said, don't, don't you have something you really want to do? And I said, yeah, well, there's one script, Mean Streets, that we've been working yeah. on for about five years. He goes, well, take it out. Rewrite it. I said, we'll need some rewrite. Well, rewrite it. Just what are you doing here? <laughs> yes. Just rewrite the thing, will you? Scorsese even happily participates in his daughter's TikTok videos, which, by the way, are cinema. So, you know, leave Marty alone. Leave Adele alone. And try to remember that someone expressing that they don't like your favorite thing is not a direct attack on you. And I am in no way pretending as if I'm just above getting angry at someone shitting all over a movie I like. The internet is nothing if not an endless ocean of infuriating takes. I'm not ready for this! All I'm saying is, the next time someone says something you don't like about something you do like, try not to get too worked up about it. And don't let some of these headlines make you think you're madder than you actually are. That's how they get you. They're very sneaky. And I know, easier said than done. It takes effort not to get worked up when you're buried beneath a trash pile of clickbait and headlines and just, I mean, horrific takes. I have seen takes you people wouldn't believe. It's frustrating because there's so much more to talking about this stuff than some headline or yes or no question can encapsulate. As you can probably tell by the fact that we are way over the 40 minute mark. I am so sorry. I'll just go ahead and leave you with this. 
watch what you watch, like what you like, and remember that we're all here, you're all here watching this overly long video essay that nobody asked for because we love movies. We love cinema. Now get the f out of here. <laughs> <laughs>